Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Khalid Mohidan, and this is the show where we talk about all the major talking points in South African cricket. We've got a very exciting, exciting episode for you today. We're going to look at the new season. We're going to look at the four-day franchise series with the talk all around the 2nd November start, which we're hoping will take place once the government has approved it and once CSA has approved it. But before we dive into the topic of today, just click the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. It will be somewhere here at the bottom. And click the notification bell for all future videos. Now, let's dive into today's video. So what I thought I'm going to do today is I'm going to present you guys with the new signings, particularly batsmen. And let's dive into the six batsmen from each franchise that have moved over. They're new signings. They've moved from their previous franchises. And they're trying to look for a new venture or a new opportunity at a new franchise in a new city. So let's get into it. First up, I got for you Sibs Makanya. Now, Sibs was at the Dolphins for quite some time. Um, he's played quite a bit of first class cricket for them. And as you can see, he's played already 33 matches in first class cricket. Now, Sibs over the years has been regarded as more of a white ball specialist and as an all rounder, of course. But um, I think that his batting is what makes him special more than he's actually his bowling. And uh, I don't know if you guys know that or you guys see it as that, but that's my opinion on him. I think his batting is quite strong. And I think he just lacked opportunities because he's normally a top order batsman, middle order batsman between five and, and three. I think that's where he operates the best. And I think that he hasn't really gotten opportunities at the Dolphins because obviously the Dolphins have such a star studded lineup with this opportunity to bat maybe lower down the order as an all-rounder, if that's how they're going to see him, I think his ability is in the middle order. But you guys must tell me if I'm talking total nonsense over here and you think otherwise. I think he has the ability to maybe bat number five, number six, and put a few overs in. As you can see, he hasn't really had many opportunities at the Dolphins, and now he's looking for more opportunities, and that's why he's moved over to the Titans for a fresh start and a fresh new team. And he's one of the more senior guys now in the side with a lot of the other guys retiring. Obviously, Fudgy has left and gone to the Knights, so there's a lot of movement that has happened. So obviously, Subunela Makanya will play that more experienced role, even though he's still very young, I think that he's seen a lot in domestic cricket and can really help the other young bees and the new guys take their cricket to the next level. I think Serbs will play a massive role, especially when the Proteas play, obviously, against England, if that's going to take place in November during that period. Serbs will play a massive role, I think, in all formats, not only in white ball cricket. The next major signing for me, and as someone that's going to be a massive, massive signing for the Cobras, in my opinion, is Tony DeSauzy. Now, Tony was previously at the Titans, and as you can see, he's played 18 matches in first-class cricket. He's also started to get this reputation that he's better maybe in the 50-over format, but to me, first-class cricket is where his place where he can really showcase his talent and show what he is capable of. As you can see, he's only played 18 matches and scored 765 runs at an average of 24 and only one century and two fifties. I don't think he's really had a prolonged run of form for the Titans as he would have liked. So actually going over the Cobras is actually a brilliant move. The Cobras need a black African batsman as well to, make, to change the numbers around. Someone that can bat in the top of the order. Someone that has amazing ability and someone that has amazing talent and someone that can bat anywhere in the top four. And I think Tony is that guy. He's so versatile in that in that top order, especially when the Cobra's captain, Zubair Hamza, leaves for test duty, or Kyle Verena is missing, for, and George Linder's missing, obviously, for um, white ball cricket. If any of those players are missing, Yanaman Milan is missing at the top of the order because he's going to play for the Proteus, or even Peter Milan for the test arena, then someone like Tony Dezorzi can slot in anywhere in that top order, which is such an amazing asset to have and such a secret weapon to have. I think that in all formats, Tony is going to be an amazing signing for the Cobras. If you want to get to know Tony Dezorzi a little better and get to know what he's like on and off the field and what his thought processes are, you can obviously go to his episode in our lockdown playlist. You will see an episode with Tony Dezorzi over there, which is an amazing opportunity for you guys to get to know him a lot better. Next, Wesley Marshall. Wesley is another guy that you can go have a look in our knockdown series. We have a video with him as well, talking about his career and his time, obviously, with Easton's, the, the semi-pro champions of the last season. So 
he had an amazing opportunity to bat for Easterns and really dominate at Easterns. And then obviously the Titans saw his ability and picked him in a couple of games. So he played for the Titans and it's, it's quite fascinating that he's made the move so early. He's went to the Lions from the Titans after getting an opportunity with the Titans. He only played about five games, scored an average of 41. And a century and 350s is not a bad return in only five games. He has an amazing talent and amazing ability to bat as well anywhere in the top to middle order. So I think he's going to be an amazing asset to the Lions as well, especially when they lose out on their Proteus players, when Rassi van der Dissen is playing international cricket, when Riza Hendricks is playing international cricket, Temba Bavuma is playing international cricket. Those are guys that are going to be losing for all formats of the game, not only just for one format. So they have a, a player that can fill any of those positions, a massive asset for the Lions. And I think he has an amazing mindset, amazing attitude, and you can really see that he has this amazing passion and mindset for cricket. And he's, the way he thinks about cricket, unbelievable. So go check out that video in our lockdown series to get to know Wesley a little better. So Vian Liver is a channel favorite. You know, a lot of you guys have been asking us to have a chat with him. We obviously had him to have a chat with us in our preview for the IPL. Um, he had an amazing chat with us there. We've done an Unlockdown episode with him. He's been on so many shows on the channel and he's going to be on a lot more in the future, I hope. So... Vian Lebe is an, another massive move going to the Warriors, a place that is also lacking a lot of spinning all-rounders and also is lacking a lot of experience and depth in their batting lineup. Vian is one of the most underrated first-class cricketers in the country, I feel. I don't think he gets enough credit for his ability. I think he's an unbelievable cricketer across all formats. He can play white ball cricket. He can play red ball cricket his, his ability is unbelievable i will never forget actually watching him play at borland park when the cobras took on the lions and he scored a century on on at borland it was a difficult wicket it was difficult conditions and he soldiered through and showed amazing ability to smash the ball all around the ground now he's obviously if you look at his average a lot closer it might just look like he has 29 is his average in 13 matches and it's quite weird that it is like that but it's those 300s that is an amazing achievement in 13 games, 300s, 250s. I think that's quite an achievement for the young Vian Lubber, who's actually getting into that age where he's reaching his peak. I think for the Warriors, especially with so many experienced guys retiring and moving on, you've got a guy in Vian Lubber that can solidify that middle order and can really give you a few overs with the ball as well. So, And he's an amazing fielder. So Vian is the full package, and I think that the other guys in the team, the youngsters in the team, are really going to be able to get along with him very well and also learn from him. His ability, his mind, the way he thinks about cricket, his attitude, his work ethic, top-notch. I think he's going to be a really great signing for the Warriors. And obviously, he's moved from the Lions to get more opportunities. He's going to be an amazing signing for the Warriors, I feel. Next, you can say it's the big gun. It's the big dog. It's the guy that has dominated in first-class cricket for quite some time now. He's done it for two franchises. It's, it's obviously KP. And now he's moved on to his third, obviously moving from the Cobras to the Knights. And at the Knights, where he really, really turned his career around. And he topped the standings two seasons ago, obviously on the charts, as the as one of the top um, run scorers. Moving to the Knights was probably the best move that he made because he became like the main number three batsman for that side. And he really showcased his talent in an amazing way. I think that obviously with Tiernis de Brain leaving to the Titans, it opened up an opportunity for him at the Knights to really show his ability. You can see in 27 matches, he's already scored 1,800 runs, 500s and 850s. Unbelievable average of 47.39. So he's an, an amazing player. He's an amazing cricketer, first-class cricketer. He's shown his ability as well in the white ball format, but I see him more as a red ball cricketer, and I think that he can really dominate and put his hand up this season, moving to the Dolphins from obviously becoming one of the main batsmen in that side, with the experienced guys also leaving, that top order really needs some oomph and the top really needs some solidity. And I think Keegan Peterson really provides that solidity in the top order to be able to link up with guys like Grant Rulofsson and guys like Marcus Ackerman and all of those flair players that they have in that side. Keegan is, Peterson is just going to bring a whole lot of stability to that batting lineup. Let's hope that he can really hit the ground running. He didn't have the greatest of seasons last season in the in the red ball format. Let's hope that he can hit the ground running. What I'm really excited about his move to the Dolphins is that he's going to improve his ability against spin because obviously there's a lot of amazing spinners in that in that side that he's going to be able to practice with day in day out. So it's really going to be a great opportunity for him to 
improve his ability against Spin. Especially in the white ball format with Keshav Maharaj most likely going to be in the side a lot. He's obviously the captain of the Dolphins for that particular se for the season for the white ball cricket. So he's going to be able to give a lot of insight to Keegan about the way he should play spin, the way the conditions are in India. Sri Lanka. So if he's really going to push for test selection, I think his move to the Dolphins is really going to take him to that extra level. And lastly, we've got one of the stars of last season, Matthew Kleinfeld. So Matthew obviously came onto the scene with amazing performances for Western Province, and he finally got his opportunity to showcase his talent for the Cobras. Now he's played 12 matches with the Cobras and has a nearly 800 runs with an average of almost 40, two centuries and three fifties. Now those one of those centuries I saw was at Newlands. He scored 170, I think it was, and it was in an amazing innings. The way he batted, the team was struggling, and he really, really pushed through. Um, he had an amazing ability to nudge the ball around, run between the wickets, make sure that he finds the boundary when need be, move the, the runs on as needed, and start in that game. It's phenomenal innings that I watched him play, and I think he's a real amazing talent. He's moving towards the end of his career now. He's not as young as the other guys on the list, but he still is an amazing asset to any team. It was quite shocking that I feel that he moved over to the Knights, but it's a place where he now can really fill the void that Keegan Peterson left in that side. I think he can bat at number three, number four, and really solidify his spot in that Knights side and really bring a lot of experience to that top order. So I'm hoping that he will be able to maybe give that, that solid partnership to a guy like Reynard von Tonda and obviously give him some extra... Um, experience and extra knowledge into the game that Reynard needs to really take Reynard's game to the next level. So I think that they will be able to work quite well together. And I think that it's an amazing move for him to take his career to the next level, especially if he's going to try to push for a Proteus test caller in the future. If that is still his dream, it's never too late to actually push for that. I think that Moving to the, the Knights is a perfect move for him, especially with Zubair Hamza being the captain. He's going to have to start. And in that number three position, if that's where Matthew Kleinfeld wants to bat, it's gonna, it would have been very difficult for him to get into the side if Zubair Hamza is batting at the level that he is normally batting at. So it was a great move, I think, for, for Matthew Kleinfeld to move over. Okay, So guys, that's all I have for you today. Those are the guys that I think that you should look out for. Some of the new signing with regards to batters that you need to look out for for the new season in the four-day franchise series. We are hoping, please, for CSA to just get their ducks in order so that we can have a 2nd November start. Please, Cricket South Africa, give us what we want. And maybe some streaming services can get involved to show the fans some of that cricket behind closed doors. I know it will be. I know that we, as journalists, are going to obviously try our best to get and give you guys as much coverage as possible if we are allowed into the grounds and they organize all of those things for us. But let us know in the comment section if there's more people that maybe you are interested in seeing. Who are some of the guys that you're excited to see perform for their franchises? We'll obviously do a bowlers edition of this sometimes this week maybe and or sometime next week. We'll still decide on when we're going to do it. It depends what news comes out and what news breaks in South African cricket. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the notification bell for all future videos. Don't forget to, of course, download the latest issue of the magazine. The link is on the screen and in the description. If you want to come on to our Fanatic call-in shows, we'll have them every single Sunday and every Friday. We'll have some Fanatic call-ins, opportunities for you guys to come on. Maybe we won't do it every Friday, but just keep an eye out. We'll give you the opportunity to come on the show. All you have to do is, before the show, email us at cricketfanaticsmag at gmail.com and you will be able to come on the show and have a chat and give your opinion to the rest of the world and all of our fans out there. And you can give your opinion and have a conversation with me and the Cricket Fanatics Mag team. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys very, very soon.